this meeting of Ohio County Fiscal Court to order uh, on this uh, 11th day of January 2022. Uh, and uh, I'm going to ask uh, uh, Sam, would you uh, pray for us and, pl and uh, place the flag? Most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we just come to you tonight and we just ask for your guidance tonight and help us to make decisions that are all pleasing to you Lord we just ask that you would be with those who are sick and those who have, have misfortunes and all those that are still uh, reeling over the the tornadoes Lord Jesus we just ask that you would undergird and strengthen them Lord just go with us forgive us and watch over us in Jesus name I pray Amen, Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America, America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, gentlemen, before you, you have the uh, uh, December 28 minutes, and as also it's been asked for a uh, amendment on the December 14th amendment uh, uh, meeting, which you've all been shown to, uh, we left out one of the uh, what is the amendment? What is, how did the EEI radio land speaker uh, communications, the motion in the meeting did not, the voting did not go through, it did not show up, it just listed it as a line item. I need to fix it and amend it at the post office. I'm looking at the meeting, the board, or not the 28th, never mind, never mind, excuse me. Did you have a few minutes here on the page? So, uh, do I have a motion to approve those? Or with the change on the 14th? You have something, Joe? Uh, uh, yeah, the, Larry, what minutes were those that you were looking at? That's what we're talking about. Yeah. We're talking about them. Yeah. I don't I don't have four in front of me. Okay. But on Larry's on that uh, fire department, you know, I made the motion and uh, Larry seconded it. It was supposed to be yeah, we have fire department and cities and if they had already received ARPA money, right. it would come off there. Yes. Okay, so, so that's where I forwarded it to. Yes. Okay. We'll, um, I'll get it done. Uh, also, there you have to, that? Yeah, we need to amend it to. Okay. What do you want it to say? It needs to be fifty thousand dollars to the fire departments and cities, except for the ones that's already received ARPA money, and the amount that they receive will be deducted off the fifty thousand. And also. Okay. Motion. I made a motion. You seconded it? Yeah. It was already on there that way, wasn't it? No. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Why didn't I? Okay. Those corrections will be made. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Back to yeah. <laughs> Just to clarify, so uh, City of Beaverdam and City of Fordsville have already gotten money so they would not get the 50. If they if they receive 50 or more they would not get it. Other than, other than the uh, fire department switch. Right if the fire department said if there I think the one fire department received 35,000 and I think wasn't there one that was a promo or something received just a little bit for some communication equipment Larry? Well they haven't been paid out anything yet. Oh, okay. Well, the city of B would have just received for the fire truck so it wouldn't be the city because you're doing cities and fire truck you're the fire stations. Right. Yes. Just so the fire station is separate from the city. Yes. Okay. Uh, this will show up later in the resolution that y'all deal with when we find the uh, funds to do that. I'll make a motion to accept with the changes, our amendments. Okay. Second. And motion second. Is there further discussion on the amendments? I've done. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Motion carries. Uh, before you, you had the bills, claims, payments, and transfers. So moved. Motion by Larry Cannon. Second. Second by Sam Small. Is there any discussion on the bills and claims? Any discussion? We don't have a wait list, right? No. Okay. 
What's this correct uh, grant balance? I just was curious. Uh, on the transfers. Charlie's in the, uh, the emergency services where he applies to get his payroll back. It was going into the general fund, but it needs to go into the emergency services fund because that's where his budget is. Oh, okay, so it's just a... It's just swapping. Swapping yeah. it to the right account. Okay. Yes. All right. Any further discussion? Being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Uh, that motion carries. Uh, you have the treasurer's December uh, report, financial report statement. Make, make a motion to acknowledge. Motion, motion by Sam Small. Second by Joe Barnes to acknowledge the uh, receipt of the treasurer's December uh, report statement. Uh, any discussion or questions? Being none, all in favor say aye. Opposed, uh, like sign. Motion carries. I'll make a motion to, re to uh, acknowledge the receipt of the clerk's December 21 financial report. I'll second. Motion by Sam Small, second by Joe Barnes, to uh, acknowledge the receipt of the clerk's uh, December the 20, uh, 2021 financial report. Is there any discussions or questions for Bess? Being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. I, I do have a question for Bess, real quick, if they don't mind. Okay. What is the, I've seen on Facebook from the state. Have you seen that letter going around about people are sharing about excuse me car values going up and causing the? Have you guys seen that, or is it just me? No. Just seen that on Facebook. I haven't seen it on Facebook. It was in the front paper. Okay. Use value. So there's going to use value as a state. State. Okay. The so they'll, they'll reevaluate all your cars, all used cars? Uh, that's the way I take it, yes. They didn't have to notify us, but the PBA will put it in the back. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I also saw a protest in there where uh, uh, there's a uh, state representative putting a bill up to try to reverse it on how far that'll go. Okay. Well, I mean, it's because uh, this read it that way. I didn't know anything about it really. I saw that. So they're going to reevaluate, raise the because the, the values. used car values are going up, so they're they tax it. More. Yeah, tax it more is what they're looking at doing. This. And we also have the clerk's quarterly report here. I'll make a motion to acknowledge the I'll second clerk's quarterly report. Uh, motion by Jason Bullock, second by Joe Barnes, to acknowledge the receipt of the clerk's fourth quarter quarterly report. Any discussion or questions for Bass? Being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. <coughs> Motion carries. Uh, boy, the clerk just keeps coming up here. How about the <laughs> clerk's uh, 2022 estimated budget? Motion by Sam. I'll second. Second by Joe. Uh, is there any discussion or questions? Being none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Um, then also, the clerk's 2022 annual <coughs> order setting the amounts of salaries for the deputies. Now, this will be a uh, actual uh, motion to implement. I'll make a motion. I'll second. Motion by uh, Larry Morphew, second by Joe Barnes. And this is her, this is this Clark's up yes. Okay. yes. This, this one is. And then there's a sheriff's one. Okay. Is right. there any questions? Being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. That motion carries. Okay, now we have one for the sheriff's uh, deputies. Sheriff 2022 annual order setting salaries for deputies. I make a motion. I'll second. Who made the motion? Sam. Sam and Joe. Sam made the motion, Joe seconded it. Is there any questions or discussions? Uh, being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. That motion carries. Uh, next you have the Sheriff's 2022 estimated budget. Uh, do I have a motion on that? I'll make a motion. Motion by Sam. I'll second. Second by 
by Larry. Larry Camp. Um, so, uh, is there any discussion on that or questions for the sheriff? He's here. Being none, all in favor say aye. aye. Uh, opposed, like sign. That motion carries. Next, I want to represent our, I mean, uh, introduce our jailer, Rip Wright, to come forward. He has uh, something to tell us. Larry Camp knows when I'm here, I need money. <laughs> he never does. He needs money. What I'm going to give you is my roster list. Right now, we're setting over almost 70 inmates in jail. Keep an average of 10 in the Christian count for the fact that we're running over the crowd. But now, we've been holding pretty good, but we're here today because that mine item that I had is going to zero balance out here. And I got six more months of this year to go. You can see there, I've got one guy that's been in there 900 some odd days. But we've seen the 591. There's 900 in there too. Uh, down near the, the first page, about two thirds of the way down. Tell you what, the uh, U.S. Constitution uh, guarantees anybody a speedy trial. That's not that's not defined really well, but we know that blame well. 920 days is not a speedy trial, and and uh, that's that's just not right. And uh, the, the the public needs to be aware of that. Uh, don't have the proof to convict the person. Are they tried him by now? He should be let out. And these are the ones you have in there right now? Plus the these are right guys now locally, but not in Christie County. Uh -huh. I'm averaging about 10 over there, and that's about 10,000 a month. And like I said, I'm pushing 70 now, and we're crowded right now. We're in the jail. Uh, and I'm working with Muhlenberg County right now to see if they'll take over our inmates so it's be closer to us, to less travel. So, yeah. so what I'm asking the court is, can you come up with 60,000 on that light item budget to finish out this term? We don't want to, but I guess we'll have to. No, but no, I ain't coming here for that. Yeah, I guess we'll have to. <laughs> where, could, where could we grab this money from? I don't know, Ann? <laughs> I've got that magic key back yeah. in my office. <laughs> It'll have to come out of reserves. Which will whittle on them, but yeah. I don't think we have a choice. Uh, is there any way it. that, you know, like ARPA or anything will help on any of that? I didn't know if it was what you said due to the COVID, COVID, you know, if that lengthened the trial dates. I'll, I will check into it. Hey, that, I'll that could, it. That's a possibility. Well, I mean, you know, they, that's a possibility that they, a lot of things canceled due to COVID and, and that yeah. stretches it out having these inmates in the jail a lot longer. Mm -hmm. Let me entertain a motion then if we cannot uh, secure the money from the ARPA, then I, I would move that $60,000 be put in the jail fund to uh, offset these additional uh, costs. What was the amount, please? 60000 Motion by Larry uh, Count, second by Larry Morphew, to transfer sixty thousand dollars from reserves to uh, to the jail fund, with a, and explore the possibility of applying the FEMA for it since COVID slowed down the. Uh, I'm sorry to put in for ARPA because COVID slowed down the trial process. Is that what you said, Larry? That's exactly what I said. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there any further discussion or questions? Where would Justin, you know these ankle bracelets we were talking about. I mean, would this be something we could look at? Well, a lot of these cases that I look at that have been there for an extended period of time are, I see some of the names are, are, are pretty serious felony offenses right. that they're mm -hmm. accused of. And I understand those, uh, but these other people, yeah, they're like, the ones we could get them out to where it, it, it's not caught. Yeah, no. so I mean, I don't, I don't know where they are in their cases. These would be with, with in the uh, Commonwealth. They would be with circuit court. So a lot of these cases, I'm not familiar on where they're at. Right. But like just, 99 days, 80 uh, days, 70 days. Yeah. Um, we could get them so, in. You know, that's what they told us before. If, <laughs> if we get them in, get them booked, and if they're nonviolent, you know, get them out under uh, house arrest or something. And that way, we're not paying on that. 
you know, which I know you know. Well, what we're, what, well, some of the things that we're trying to do is like, I don't see on this list, again, I'm looking to see some of these that I'm familiar that may have come originally through district court and through the process and have gone to circuit court. Um, and when I look through here, there could be a few that I could see if they're if they're still in district court that we might be able to do something. But um, a lot of these we would talk to we'd have to talk to the Commonwealth Attorney on. Mm -hmm. We have that option now because the contract that we signed with this agency indicates that we can have ankle bracelets. Uh, uh, and the, Jimmy's going through all the training right now. And he's telling me all the precise things that, that this uh, that this bracelet can do and provide as far as information. We can get as many of those as, as we want, or as few as we want. We're only billed with when they're in use, and so uh, when in when they're in use, uh, the cost is less than I think five dollars a day on all of them. I don't know of any in excess of five dollars. A lot of that we would want to recoup from the defendant if we could. But if right. they're truly indigent and can't pay even five dollars a, a, a day, which there, there could be some, uh, then the county would, you know, we'd have to take to paying some of the indigent. But that would be a big help to the person with ten thousand. Yeah, and those ten inmates a month. That's what yeah. I was going to say. And if you're, if, if, even if we we lost the five dollars, you're still. Oh, well, it costs cost far less than housing. It I mean, still costs far housing. less than housing. Uh, but I mean, and I understand different. there's some you have to house. I understand that, but there's some that they're. Okay, our meeting we can look into that. That might be, you know, we talked about bracelets. We, we, we might buy a few more. Yeah, was it thirty-three dollars a day? Then mm -hmm. it's we, not going to help situation today, but that, yeah. that's something we need to say. Something about. we need to look into in the future, though. Well, what we could, what we could probably do is is uh, uh, talk to uh, Mr. Chambers and ask him if he wants, if what if we want to sit down with him just to kind of think if there's some ways with regard to help, because uh, uh, I don't, I don't know. Why some of them? I assume it's because of serious felony offenses. Correct. I would assume the ones that are in there for an extended period of time, and we really have to look at the risk level. Uh, uh, you know, and I understand that part. Yeah, right. but I'm just saying that there are some non -violent. Yeah, we don't. We don't want to be. If there's ten people, you can keep out. Yeah. If, That's uh, you know, if you it don't keeps mind. you that much money. If you don't mind, Justin, if you take the lead on trying to arrange that meeting. Okay. But I would like to be involved with sure. talking to him, mm -hmm. and I probably could call Tracy Jimmy. might want to. Do you want to meet Tracy so we can? And I try, yeah, I try to get bring Jimmy and but and rip in it too. And that would help on the over population of Virginia too, and him going back and forth to Christian County or Muhlenberg County. Right. So we're looking at saving additional costs that way to help pay that five dollar a day. Right. So. I guess I don't know if say I. Hold the like sign. Thank you, Rip. Thank you. You did you did it again. <laughs> Rip, don't hurry back on my account, okay? I love you, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want to introduce to you from FEMA, Chris Arna. He's gonna to talk to us a little bit about the, how things are going as far as the uh, FEMA funds are and where we are and all that stuff. Well, I can't talk the specifics on the FEMA funds, but uh, I am here to talk to you guys to make sure that everyone does get registered. Uh, we do want to make sure that anybody that had damage out of the 50 to 75 for the families that were impacted have get registered, or if anybody knows that they have damage but just hasn't registered, we want them to go through their insurance first and then register with FEMA We'll get that nine digit number. That's their key to the whole program. Um, after they get their nine digit number, they can access it online either at disasterassistance.gov. We did have teams going door to door. Um, they're called disaster survivor assistance teams. They've can they feel they've canvassed the area very well. Um, we did have a mobile. Uh, DRC unit here at, in the basement. They will be back on the 20th. Um, I believe that's six to eight people that can still help people register, uh, provide case updates, and what uh, the resident's next steps are. Um, What's the date on that, Crystal? The 20th of this month. 20th. Now, is that the last date? 
Because I know we're no, here that's, that's when they're coming well. back, and then I don't know how long they're going to stay, okay. but they will be back down in the basement, from what I understand. Um, there will be signage, so then that way, if you guys want, you can promote it on social media that hey, we're going to have FEMA back here at the courthouse. Uh, yeah, in the basement on the twenty. What time might be? Nine to three. Years uh, I believe their hours are eight to five, but I can double check and get back to you. Um, once it, once the residents have registered and got that nine-digit number, they will get what they call an eligibility letter that will state either yes, you are eligible or you're ineligible. Now everybody knows that. Ineligible means denied, but with FEMA, it just means we need more information. That could be the most common reason. We'll say uh, John Doe, Joe Smith is ineligible due to, and there's a three letter code. The most common one right off the bat is INS. That's just saying we need the letter from your insurance company before we can proceed because we don't want to double dip or make sure if the insurance is going to cover, we get that put in their file and they keep the ball, the ball start rolling again. If they are referred to SBA for a small business loan, we encourage everybody to fill it out whether they want the loan or not, because that, is, unfortunately that's part of our process. If they don't fill it out, that can stop them in their tracks again and they'll be wondering, hey, why haven't I received anything and then they would go, well have you called touch base with FEMA? Did you register? Did you did you fill up? Were you referred to a small business? Yes, no. If they were, did you fill it out? If they say no, they will then again tell them, you know, we need you to fill that out. If they get turned down by SBA, then they get funneled back over into FEMA for other needs assistance. So we just want to make sure that everybody does that. Um, I've given all of you my cards. Um, I'm able to be reached at any time. Yeah, Chris, I was just going to ask you, have you any idea how many have moved along in the, uh, in the process? In the process? I don't have specifics at the moment. Okay. Um, I can try. And so the families, you know, we're talking 50 to 70 at home. But yep. How many families do you think have filed and got, have you even filled the paperwork to make the phone call to get the nine digit code number? Um, I don't have that number. Oh, I, I can that. get back to you guys. Let me ask you one more question. Okay. Just, uh, just use this scenario. You've got a home, low weight, no insurance. Uh, can you give me some kind of idea how much people would pay for something Every, like that? Or? Everything is case by case basis. Okay. There can be neighbors that have identical damage and sometimes one neighbor will get more, some will get less. It, yeah. Everything is case by case. Yeah. I just um, know some cases that, that don't have any insurance or didn't have any insurance and uh, and I just, that's the reason I was, but I, I would encourage them to make this next meeting. Then, so. Yeah, and if, if anybody has any uh, questions or concerns, they can obviously go down here, back here on the 20th. Um, if anybody comes to you, uh, you can get a hold of me. You got my phone number and email, and then I can provide you guys a privacy waiver, and then we can get their information and have somebody look up their case if they're not back at that point. But they can also go to any one of the recovery centers in any of the counties. They can go to, over to Bowling Green and Warren County if they happen to be shopping um, at the old Sears building. Um, there's uh, one over in Muhlenberg. I, I'd have to look up where exactly that one is at the moment, but we have a few rotating ones, so they can go to any one of those. Okay. And I'll be here for a little bit for any questions or if anybody has, and appreciate it. I'll be in touch. Thank, Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chris. Uh, while we're on this, uh, Rachel's here from. Uh, Rachel McCubbins here from uh, Senator Paul's office, and I think it's kind of her subject too. So let's go ahead and let uh, Rachel talk to us now. Thank you, Judge. I appreciate it. Chris, thank you for your comments. Um, I just wanted to inform the court uh, and, the, and the county about the work that Senator Paul's office can do to help uh, in this disaster. Obviously, we want to stay in close 
connection with uh, Judge Johnston as he moves through this um, recovery phase from the public assistance side of things and, and working on the, you know, on the government side. But with individual help that we can give to constituents, we have an office in Bowling Green with a group of caseworkers, and that's all they do every day is helping people with federal agencies with problems that they may be having with the federal agency. So I, I'm going to get back to FEMA in a minute, but thinking about all of the other sort of alphabet soup of federal agencies that people deal with every day, and if you have just had all your worldly possessions destroyed, you're, you have to recover some documents. That's frustrating. Uh, we're working with Social Security Office, the IRS, Veterans Administration. You can just think of a lot of situations that might come up in a family's life where we can help them navigate that process and get those documents returned. Um, even veterans who have lost their medals um, that have been taken away in the, in the storm, we can help them be replaced. But those things that get you back on your feet, like your Social Security card, we can help get that process going. And so I'm going to be uh, having some mobile office hours here in the uh, courthouse tomorrow from uh, 10 to 1. So I'll be here. Anyone can come by and see me. But I've given Judge Johnson my contact information, including my cell phone number. I'm happy to work with people directly. You can, you can all refer them to me via email or to our Bowling Green office where the caseworkers there can and pick up the ball. Tomorrow when I'll be here, we can take care of privacy release forms and things like that to sort of speed the process along. We just want to make it as, as simple as possible. Um, so let me go back to some of the comments that Chris made about FEMA. We will encourage everybody that walks in to my little mobile office or calls me on the phone to ask them to file a claim with FEMA if they've sustained damages in this. That's absolutely essential. It needs to be done by February the 11th. And so let's make sure people understand that is a hard and fast deadline. And um, he also alluded to the SBA side of assistance that's available. I think it's a terrible misnomer when you hear the term small business administration. People think, oh, that doesn't apply to me, that's <coughs> an individual. But in these circumstances, SBA does make very low interest loans available, up to $200,000 for household, uh, you know, <coughs> to borrow to use to work on your home if it's been destroyed. So let's say you have insurance, but it's not going to cover everything. You don't qualify for assistance through FEMA, but you have to kind of enter that portal through FEMA. So you went in, you get denied through FEMA, but that is the beginning process. So our office can help people work through what seems to be so confusing sometimes. And I, I don't know if you all identify with this, but when you're under a lot of stress, sometimes you just need a, you know, extra set of eyes on a document or some, someone to help you sort of navigate through this. That's what we are there to do, and we're really happy to do it. Um, I would be happy to take questions, Judge, or just I'm going to stick around. Uh, after the meeting. Okay. Um, I also want to mention that Senator Paul is planning on coming uh, to the area next week. Uh, chances are it will be Tuesday. We're still working out details. Of course, we'll coordinate with that with you. Um, this is not something designed to be um, a crowd gathering kind of activity. He wants to meet with folks who are engaged in this recovery process and, and just see how the process is working. We're getting some really good back on, on the efforts of FEMA and Kentucky Emergency Management. We're trying to work with them on a regular basis. I was on a call with them today. So we've all got to help help in this process and we want to do anything we can from the federal perspective uh, to support uh, the process that's in place. And then when you see problems that maybe are not working as well as they should, then we'd be happy to advocate to unknot some of those. Appreciate it, Rachel. You say you're going to be around a little while? I'm going to stay here for the whole meeting, so I'll be All ready. right. If any of you want to catch her afterwards, she's, yes. she's available. I'd be happy to. Thank you. Yes, sir. So, apparent. So, I just spoke with uh, my counterpart, the division supervisor for the area. 220 people have registered for Ohio County. So, that's a bit more than the 50 to 75, but. So, pretty well. Because that's the main thing, to get the word out that they, right. they have a deadline by yep. February 11th and they need, one thing they need to do is get that nine-digit number of file anyway. Yep. If, if you don't have the nine-digit number by February 11th, you just have to file by February 11th. 
You'd have to open an account and get that number. And, and then file you, you might be denied, but you can go back. Exactly. And, okay. and I also wanted to mention it's Neal's Chapel in Muhlenberg County is where they have a uh, freestanding um, temporary center there for the DRC. Uh, they have members from the Red Cross there and several other agencies, but they're located in Neal's Chapel there in actually Sacramento, I think, is the main yeah. address. That's what needs to get out because people are overwhelmed. I'm sure I've never lived through something like that, but I mean, it is very, they just need to know that's it's what they It's a good need. word, overwhelming. Yeah. yeah. Well, and also another thing, um, before I forget, just because somebody gave their information to the emergency manager on their damages mm -hmm. does not mean they've registered for assistance. Okay. Because that is another misnomer that people think that they give it to the emergency manager or they give it to Red Cross that they think they're like oh well, I already told these people so this is I've, I've registered it's like they need to come to you yeah they sounds need to like come. it's come up and been a problem already but it sounds like several people have applied you know yeah. wow so that's 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 a good number then because I yeah. was hoping that uh, the biggest slowdown thing that that uh, people come to is frustrated with is when they get their denial letter and they go to the Small Business Administration first, that really upsets folks. But we just keep telling you, go ahead and do that because that's the part of the hurdle. All right, well, thank you. Thank you there. Okay, uh, I will go ahead, since we're on this subject, we still wait for later before I had it on the agenda, I'll go ahead and, and tell you and you guys and everybody that our road department has been working diligently on their part of the cleanup. We have a, a site that we're uh, putting the material on that we haul off the roadway, including anything that a private person pushes out or calls out to the roadway, we pick it up. And we're taking it to our park in Fordsville or North Oakland Park. We had an area in the back of it. Uh, the State Highway Department built the road back there and we're sharing the uh, facility to put the wood in. Uh, some of it has been cut up and, and salvaged and then what's not is burned right there on that spot. And the uh, State Highway Department is going to help us whenever we're done with the burning. We're going to clean it up and sow it down in grass and they'll never know by summer that this was ever a burned site. So uh, we're moving on that uh, quickly. Uh, I am happy FEMA did give us a, an extended uh, time. It was to expire today, but now we have till the end of the month to uh, where they'll pass 100% of our costs uh, of our men and everything and equipment where we're moving the material off the roadway. Um, and then when that time runs out, whatever we like, they'll just pay us 80% of our uh, uh, overtime and our equipment. So uh, right now we're 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 uh, putting every effort now to that to try to get this done as much as possible, and I believe we're going to make it by the this extended deadline to where we have 100% uh, re reimbursement to our road department for and an emergency management uh, department for uh, moving up this uh, this debris. Well, isn't it? You got to. Isn't right now? So people understand. Right now, the county's only moving vegetation and brush. Yes. Later, at a later date, FEMA will pay for for the dump part for the of dump the, trash of it. But right now, the only thing the county's getting off the right, right away if they get it to the right away is just vegetation and brush. Right now, yeah. probably bid that out for dump trash uh, to contractors. I would figure. Probably. I think that's what they're doing in Wilmer County. Probably so. And also, Joe's helping us find a site for the uh, uh, remarkably small impact in Centertown as far as this debris goes. The personal loss and the uh, farmer's loss there was, oh man, it was tremendous. But it missed the, uh, except for one road, uh, it missed our county roads, it missed the houses down there, except for that road. And so Joe's trying to help us play, so we don't have to hire all that all the way to the Ford's. Yeah, I talked to Charlie. I don't know if he updated you. Uh, Nick and him was coming down tomorrow. We've got a location Good. to take it to. That's um, good. So yeah, I, I have a question, Judge. I didn't know then. Would that extend what we're doing too? We're doing an extra patrol 
every officer one hour per shift. Uh, would that be covered in that? Do you know, or that, would that ask, extend me or not? Or? I'll have to ask Charlie if that's something FEMA. You, since we got the that. extension on the other, I would think so, but it wasn't specifically told there. You did an extra patrol up there where the houses have been damaged. Yeah, and any, any damaged area, we're we're doing a mandatory extra patrol one hour every officer. Okay. So and we're trying to stay in those out, uh, areas where there's damage. We've had a, a couple of thefts, luckily, uh, not too many, but uh, we're trying to be in those areas, especially where some of the utility trucks are. We we did have a theft on those early on, uh, but since we started our extra patrols. Uh, beef those up they've stopped so yeah. I didn't know if that was something we could continue or not but we'll, we'll check. You yeah. wouldn't think you'd have to do that but yeah. unfortunately it's, it's sad that we I, have to. They were still incapable of the mines when the tornado come through that uh, they, they, that's they, what chased them off. Ain't that something? Yeah. Oh my. The police uh, presence in the those areas also I think during the snowstorm and all that probably uh, probably uh, helped us uh, prevent several accidents because uh, speed hurts on slick roads and those patrol cars sitting there slowed down the traffic and those were some of our main roads is where they were patrolling and I noticed that and that was a great thing. Uh, Sheriff, I will find that out for you first thing in the morning call you. But uh, anyway, I, that's where we are and uh, we're moving pretty good and I think that uh, I think we'll have our roadways clear by the end of the month. That is our goal, and I truly believe we will. Um, uh, I asked Charlie, and he said yes, he thought it would. So I will get the paperwork to him. Yeah. Uh, when, next on our agenda, we have resolution 2022-21. That's the hospital reaffirmation. Uh, Justin, you want to tell them real quickly what that is? Yeah, you know, just the. Uh, I think they're getting pretty close to closing on this uh, this loan. Uh, I guess the uh, we're resisting to the bond for the loan. Ask for this additional resolution from the county. Again, it doesn't bind the county to anything other than um, uh, execution documents on behalf of the Public Facilities Corporation. So uh, I'd ask uh, the court to consider a motion uh, to pass this resolution, uh, 22-21. I'll make a motion. I'll so motion with Joe Bonner. For the judge to execute this. Pick somebody. Second by uh, Jason Bullock. Um, I'll take it with Jason Bullock. Is there any further discussion? Any discussion or questions? Being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Motion carries. Should that be in the roll? Should we? You want to roll call that one? Yeah, you want to roll call Okay, go ahead and roll call Bullock? Yes. Barnes? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Town? Yes. Marking? Yes. Small. Yes. Uh, do you want to, do you, who's going to deliver this document? Justin, you or you want us to? After I get it, yeah. Once Miranda uh, signs it as the clerk, then if she'll send it to me, I'll forward it to the council for the hospital or for the bond company. Uh, like can are you going to open the bids or? or uh, no, this is just to advertise, Jim. Just add, make a motion to advertise. Yeah, I want to make a motion to advertise for a mini excavator equivalent to a 35G. And also, if we can do both of them on the same advertising, uh, 2022 heavy duty four wheel drive, three quarter ton crew cab pickup, both gas and diesel. I second. Motion by Larry. Second, you were by, you. second by Larry. Larry Count, second by uh, Larry Morphew. Uh, uh, you want newer used on that truck? It is 2022. 2022. Yeah. Okay. Uh, man? Yes. This has got the crew cab, but uh, I don't know whether the crew cab is necessary or not. So uh, let let that uh, motion reflect. Uh, Why don't you just take both of them, and crew cab and a record, cab. and then we don't we'll buy what you want to buy. Okay, got yeah, it. sounds good. You got it, Miranda. Yeah. Okay, okay. Have a motion, second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Pose like sign. Uh, Miranda, will you? See that that ad is run. Okay. Thank you. I've already ran it. 
I just did it. <laughs> uh, do you have the bids for the parking lot open? I do. I don't. Uh, we only got one. Okay, bring it to. Uh, uh, let Jason Bullock open. He's not got to open a bid forever. I'm okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> We're not. Had lost his sleepover, Jason. Had lost his sleepover, yeah. Yeah. He said, set far enough down that, you know. And it was this, this was used ARPA money. Is that one there? Are you going to? Okay, so the bid is from Taylor's t and &E LLC. What is Jay's doing again? Taylor's Tennessee Bank. T and E LLC. I don't know what the T and E is. Um, Dwayne Taylor, and it's uh, from so he's from here from Hartford. That that's for the. This lighting. is lighting. Yeah, that's, that's what lighting. I say. That's the green. Well, okay. Let's go on I down. Thought maybe they'd be in together, but they're not. Well, okay. I got to look at this, and I. Well, we had we had greens in. Lighting, so, so this is know, we're going to do the let's lighting. Let's, let's pass on down to the lighting, the 16 then. Yeah, I was thoroughly confused. I thought, I thought he's got into the lawn. <laughs> yeah, I thought he's got into the lawn. I think nobody did on the mower, so that okay. means we go shop for it. Okay, okay, so for, for the bid for the lights, and I guess this is for the soccer field out of the park. Yes, it's all right. Um, labor is 52.50. The material is $27,887.72, making the total bid uh, $33,137.72. Did we bid, what did we have it, $30,000? What did we? Uh, I think it was that. It's right at $30,000 we had or something yeah. like that. We can amend it the next one. And the lights have a five-year parts only warranty. So 36 lights. 36 lights? 36 lights, yeah. Um, and those are LEDs, correct? Yes. 500 watt LED sport lighting fixtures and a 6,500. That's how yeah. bright it is. That's how bright That's pretty bright. Yeah. That's about $1,000 a light. <coughs> yes. That'd be consistent. When the others was put up, which were uh, metal halide, Back in the uh, uh, late uh, late mid to late nineties, they was a third that amount. But that was a long time ago. I hear that. Yeah, everything seems inflation has taken over everything that we deal with. Okay, do I have a motion to approve that bid? Uh, yeah, so moved. That's only the bid and, we got. And yeah, and that money's already been approved through the ARPA funding. Larry, Larry Cam, second by Jason. Jason Bull. You got that? Got it. Got it? All right. Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed right. like sign. That's approved. Uh, we'll be back with the, on the uh, mower since the, nobody bid on it. It was advertised. He'll shop and That's he'll bring this to us on the next court meeting. Yeah. So we didn't get one on the, uh, I assume the greens. We did not. Uh -huh. What about on the medical EQ bid? Did yes. we get? Yes, and it's a, I opened it because I thought it was a Christmas card. Somebody folded it up. Just me. one? <laughs> yes. Let Sam open that. He ain't never opened the bed. He just pays it open. Yeah, yeah, he does. Yeah. 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 So Chris said, this doesn't kind of look like Christmas card of over, doesn't it? It does, but if nobody told it, it wasn't. It's all right, Larry. If there's another, you'll get it. Master Medical Equipment, Jackson, Tennessee. Uh, for con care. You better move $50,385. $50,385. Do we remember what, what was lot for that? I've got to be. You've got some other equipment there, too. Yeah. Three feet or two. Is that the, on the stretchers and everything for the ambulances? I thought maybe. That's 15. Uh, life pack, 15 defibrillators. Yeah, 15. Oh, okay. How much is the sample? 50,385. For how many units, Sam? Three. Ooh. 
three this units and three AC AC adapters. Yeah. I, I thought this might suffice. They're fifteen thousand five hundred dollars each. I can't remember what he had, what he thought they would be. Well, we we budgeted eighty three thousand eighty five. Are there cardiac monitors on there? That's what the, the that's what patients, excuse me. Okay. And that's what those are. Okay, what are, what about the ventilators? They're not no. They're not on here. Oh. Is there another bit? Should we uh, table that and, and, and let uh, Jim? Mr. Duke or you didn't receive anything on the ventilators? No. Uh -huh. So what we could do not to, there was no supposed to be open, but we can do this and then do others. What do you have on one day? What's your pleasure? He has the um, I, you know what? folks that he's got. Yeah. I would almost let, we don't know what the, I, I don't, let's see. I would almost have, rather have Jim kind of look over them. Okay. I would because uh, if the specs yeah. isn't what, I mean, I, what he wants. We've, uh, we've, re we've, Done what we had to do, we opened the beat back there. That's what the light was just on. Yeah, I would just rather not and let Jimmy look over it and see. Can you uh, put in there uh, to allow him to look over them and prove it on his yes. feet? Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah that, I think that. he said he was like six months out on getting those things. Maybe that's fine. We can put that in our on the form of a motion. Okay. Oh. But I, you know, I don't know anything about that. I'll surgery. make the motion to accept the bid. Contention that Jim is okay with it, and if he is, I'll give you permission to write the check. I'll say. Motion by Jason Bullock, second by Jim. On that equipment. We weren't for sure if it's meant to met their specs and everything yeah. because it, it didn't have the ventilators in there included and the stretcher. And we originally had 83,000 set yeah, aside. So they come in at 50 something, but we would. Just want to make sure that I understand. And I want to make sure that's what he wants. You know, that's Miranda. Can you read that motion? We're not talking about it. I can. Hang on. Okay. So make sure those are good monitors that that's what you want to know we're talking about. Okay, we have the motion and the second, and we read the motion back. Yeah, this way, you know, as soon as Jim looks at it, he can move on if it's all right. But he, 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 I don't think we have to pay up front. I think I could just send him a purchase order and get an order. Send it back. Say this was right. Okay. Uh, they don't make that go right. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like saying that motion is approved. Um, okay. Yeah. Would, uh, you want to do that and then let me explain the road in question? If you want me to. Uh, okay. This is, uh, we have us down here against the same thing. We have the same item business down twice as item 13 and item 18, so we won't have to do that over. Okay. Uh, we have, before, Justin, would you explain this next one? Our opioid agreement, we finally have it finalized? Well, we, this is uh, certainly the litigation is very complex that, that we're involved in with many counties and governmental entities. Uh, the uh, firm that we have, uh, hired to um, help us litigate this claim has requested a settlement participation form uh, which would uh, be discussed in discussions with the Jensen settlement this court has already uh, entertained and, and, and passed the motion entered into a, an agreement for possible settlement and allocation uh, would be apportioned to, to Ohio County consistent with that settlement this is additional form that they needed in order for us to participate um, and so uh, I'd ask the uh, court to uh, entertain this motion uh, entertain a motion for the court uh, for the judge to sign uh, this settlement participation form and any other documents that may be necessary in the settlement of, of our possible claim so moved motion to Sam Small okay. 
Second by Larry Camp. Uh, any further discussion? This is his agreement. Go ahead and roll call this one, Miranda. Yes. Bullock? Yes. Barnes? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Town? Yes. Morview? Yes. Small? Yes. That, uh, that motion is uh, passed. Uh, item number 20 on your agenda. I just, it's, uh, some OSHA requirements that may come down and may not. Uh, I was uh, required to uh, begin process in case we do it. And so I just handed you some literature earlier. So Miranda, write that in the motion that, I mean in the minutes that I did pass out the uh, paperwork to the magistrates. Uh, there's not enough knowledge about it at this time to do any action. Uh, next we have ratification of the December 22 and the December 28 motions. Uh, Justin, you want to explain that to them too? Yeah, and I'd ask the, the court to uh, uh, motion to ratify all actions taken at the meetings held on December 22nd and December 21st, 2021. And this is just mainly out of, out of precaution uh, uh, because of COVID and, 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 and other issues. Sometimes uh, we even have to make calls, uh, votes are taken maybe even by phone. Uh, I want to go ahead. We don't know how the Attorney General's office uh, would ever would, would decide on things like that. So as a <coughs> precaution, we'll just go ahead and ratify those things that we had already decided to do anyway. On those two meetings? You on those two meetings. So moved. Mm -hmm. Motion by Larry Cam. Second. Second by Larry Morphy. Is there any discussion? These are all things that you've seen before. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Pass. I have three uh, personnel matters. The first one, sorry for late notice, but I've talked to Joe about because of uh, it is a, a pay scale change and need to go through the, the uh, committee, but I did. Uh, talked to him about a while ago. But if you recall, we hired Jennifer Darty at the animal uh, control, uh, animal shelter about two meetings ago. She's worked out really well. It's very knowledgeable things. But we wasn't ready to uh, totally make the move. But we want to give her a trial period as animal control uh, person. And we're changing her status from part-time to temporary. Because temporary can work 40 hours. She's going to do try out as an animal control officer. We're going to pay her $16 an hour, which is a little below what it would have been if she gets animal control and gets, a, and we decide her to do it. She'll go to school and all that and get her certifications before she's eligible for a salary job. But this is a part time basis. Jennifer Darty, $16 an hour. Roll call. Pull up. Yes. Barnes? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Town? Yes. Morphew? Yes. Small? Yes. And the next one I have is senior services. Uh, we have trouble keeping meal drivers, but right now we have a, uh, it's called full-time uh, meal driver, but that's less than 22, less than part-time hours. At 9.56 an hour, and it's Lisa Lowe as a meal delivery driver. Uh, that began in uh, uh, right away. So, uh, roll call. Bullock? Yes. Barnes? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Count? Yes. Morphew? Yes. Small? Yes. Okay. That one is done. Uh, the last one on here is the uh, Park ARPA program worker, and it's uh, Tori Tennyson. To move her from seasonal to full time to be reevaluated at budget time and it's effective uh, now. Uh, so, uh, but go ahead and uh, roll call that. That's Corey, Tori Tennyson. Okay. Tennyson or Tennyson? Tennyson. Tennyson. Okay. Tennyson with a K. With a K. With a K. Pull up. She, he asked me the price. It's not the salary. It's not on here. It's, it's the same. She's at right now. It'd be the same, but what is that? I don't know. Off the top okay, we'll just write same then. How about that? It does say same on here. So go ahead and roll call. Bullock. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Town. Yes. Morphew. Yes. Small. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Town. Yes. Morphew. Yes. Small. Yes. Johnson
Bullock? Yes. Barnes? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Down? Yes. Morphew? Yes. Small? Yes. Uh, a little bit out of order, but I want to get this done. I don't know if we're going to have committee reports or not, but while I've got this on my uh, thing here, I want to make some board appointments. I want to make an uh, appointment to the Ohio County Water District, District 1. This is a, a renewal, and it's Michael Newman. Go call. Yes. Barnes? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Town? Yes. Morphew? Yes. Small? Yes. And to the IDA board to fulfill uh, an unexpired term, uh, Seth Southern. Bullock? Yes. Barnes? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Morphew? Yes. Small? Yes. Uh, do we have any committee reports? Has any of the committees met? Uh, uh, Larry, you, you want to tell them on the on the jail that we are moving forward and we got more meetings set up? Yeah, yeah, that's that's about the extent of it, Judge. We're uh, still working, and I think the next meeting we'll we'll be with the judges and the county attorneys, and uh, and we'll sit down. We've got some few issues we've got to work out, but it is moving forward. Yeah. Um, the judges have been in agreement for quite a while. I see county attorneys that uh, <laughs> specifically one. I won't call him out. It's not ours. Uh, but anyway, it's, it is moving along. It's it's okay though. We expect to <coughs> ask questions. We want all three counties that's in this to be um, to be satisfied. Of course, that's Ohio, Butler, and uh, Edmonton County. And if anybody does know, we're working diligently to try to come up with agreement to explore the possibility of building a regional jail for all three counties to save all three counties money. Uh, any other committees to report? Uh, this kind of falls under, I, I guess, yes. a committee somewhere. But uh, yes. uh, Charlie talked to us about doing a Jaws of Life on his truck because a lot of times he'll, he'll He'll get to the scene of an accident uh, as a first responder and an emergency manager. Uh, sometimes ahead of, of, the, of the other first responders, you know. And so what he was looking at is uh, adding, putting a small set of jaws on his uh, emergency truck that uh, he would have with him. Uh, the cost would be uh, $6,475. And that would allow him to kind of get things uh, set up and in direction so when people get there to help him, you know, he's already got some of the steps already done to try to evacuate anybody from a vehicle. Um, and that was the total cost of that. So I would put that up for a motion. I'll say that. Jaws for $6,000. 475 And this will be coming out of the ARPA funds. So okay. I'll Got a motion by by uh, Joe Barnes, second by Larry Morphew, to purchase the job supply for the emergency manager at six thousand four hundred seventy-five dollars. How many of our uh, how many of our fire departments have the jobs? You know, I was asking. I know Portal does, and I, 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 I believe, believe that, I believe they all do. I'm not sure about the substations. I, I don't know if they all do. Uh, Centertown has one. Dundee does not have one. Probably he's got one, but it's down now. I've told him to try to get get it fixed. I'm afraid of it. Uh, I guess the North Beta, probably. That's something that I would, you know, like with the money that they're going to get from this ARPA fund, you know, Larry, I, what I was kind of looking at is uh, the fire department's kind of looking at how they want to utilize that money. Yeah. Because uh, this is a much, uh, this is a, a little bit of a different unit because I know some jobs they get. They get really up there on the real heavy duty ones. So, but it's something we could definitely look into. Yeah, I, uh, guess, I guess my question is that, I, and not to take anything away from Charlie, I understand that, but the fire department's right. usually closer to where it's at and they're going to be there first. Right. 
and if anything, we need to get them to join us right before we look at the. And, it, and, well, and, and I agree with that, and I think most of them already have it, except maybe a couple. Yeah. And you know, right. but in the daytime, they have trouble filling them, and Charlie's always goes to the wrecks, and he's. A lot of times he gets there before the fire departments do. Well, they're volunteering. He's full time, so yeah, they're. <laughs> but, uh, but you're right, Larry. We'll, we need to check into that. And I'll but call but he you. does get there first a lot of times and uh, wait for the fire truck to get there, and he's one that actually uses the job. Yeah. Well, well while, we, while we're on that, then, uh, and I, I don't have a problem with uh, Charlie having one, I just say that we need to look yes. at our fire departments, and maybe this money that in the next hour, right. money coming in. They, so the fire departments that don't have the job supply right. can take some of that money and do that. That's yeah. Right. Well, the, what we're giving each fire department, they'll have it to do. That's right. That's what I want to say. But all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Motion carried. Is there any other committee reports? And uh, Larry, uh, I think the deal with our road uh, proposing there will fall under road committee. If you don't mind bringing that up okay. now. Uh, I spoke with Justin, our county attorney, and what I, uh, we're looking at closing the road on Cotton Lane. It's 1.6 miles from 764. Uh, the landowners have been uh, contacted. I've had them to sign uh, affidavits that says that they're the only landowners back there. Uh, this, this is an, they're all in agreement. And let me mention their names here. Just well, let me read this. Uh, Big Lynn Higdon, Brian Keith Arnold. Philip Crabtree II and Christopher Howe, and each one of them signed this. I own property that is located to the ending of Cotton Lane, uh, property in Ohio County, Kentucky. I wish to see the legal description of Cotton Lane amended to reflect its ending to be relocated at the new double swinging gate, approximately 1.6 miles from the intersection of 764. This change will be viewed and respected by all parties who own land at the end of Cotton Lane. The road past the gate will be maintained collectively by the neighbors who own property located past the gate and uh, shall no longer be a burden to the Waikati Road Department. But uh, I first this uh, information to Justin, but he wants to follow up with a motion just to make sure that he's going to look, make sure that that is the total landowners or whatever Justin may be. It, it just so the county, so county road can be discontinued in a, in, in a few different ways. Um, the court could entertain a motion today that, that states if, if it meets section 178, 116, then it could be discontinued. Uh, that's uh, pretty narrow in scope, so I don't know if it necessarily meet the definition. Um, if it doesn't, then we'll have to do the advertising, pick two viewers, do all that, um, and uh, publish notice in the paper uh, you'll have to work under, I don't know if it's 100 or what it is, but it, I think the only thing the court could entertain today is if for some reason it's found that it meets the qualifications consistent with 178, 116, then it could be closed. But I, I, if you want to wait until we figure out some more things, uh, and specifics with respect to this, we can wait. So I just don't know anything about uh, Cotton Lane as far as, as uh, a lot of its specifics. Uh, could we do a discontinue maintenance on it? We've done that on many roads over the years, and technically they're on our maps forever, but we don't do anything to them, and we allow the property owners to put up their gates. Well, we could do that, Judge, but what these individuals are asking, because if you do that on limited maintenance, you still have to allow people to come mm -hmm. along the road. Yeah, it's still, uh, if it's still county road. Yeah, it's still county road. Okay, Even with it. the gates, the gates was open or whatever, they still I'm, I'm drive through. But, and but this is, uh, and like I uh, told Justin, this is the individuals that own land. They want to close, they want to put up a gate. And uh, whatever Justin, he's our legal uh, attorney here, whatever he tells us, I'm, I'm fine with. So no one uses that a right away? Well, what, what that uh, chapter, so what 178, 116 says is, is if this is used as a, if it becomes now that this county road is really just a public drive, it can be discontinued automatically. Okay, if, if, if we're not maintained or haven't done anything with respect to this road for over a three year period of time, then, then that could be co cause for the discontinuance of the road. Uh, there's one other one, but I don't necessarily remember what it was uh, or what it is. So I'd have to see if any of those factors apply. 
if any of those apply, it could be discontinued because we have the execution of a document by all the adjacent and abutting landowners that provide <coughs> the closure of the road. If, if one of those, if, I mean, if, if, if those do, if, do not apply, then we have to do it. We're going to, the judge will have to do for point of viewing committee, and we're going to we're going to have to do a little bit more. So it just depends. I'll have to get, get some additional facts. Had you had you read or just that we just uh, a point of viewing committee to go out there and look at it, go through the panels, and this would just be this would just be helpful backup or whatever. Uh, I mean, your safest thing is to always is is to always uh, go ahead and point the viewing committee, and then post the notices. Um, uh, consistent with the statute that it that they have to close it. Okay. Okay, judge, if you will, then just uh, go ahead and uh, appoint a viewing committee, and uh, okay. then at the next court meeting, will there be sufficient right. time to uh, to look at it? Uh, okay. If you want to enter the minutes, uh, Miranda, I'm going to appoint, uh, of course, uh, Nick Woolen, our road supervisor, Charlie Shields, our uh, uh, EMA director, and I'll. As a citizen at large, uh, Jason Gary. Now, Justin, what will be their duties? I've, I've, I've got a checklist uh, that, I've, that I've sent a long time ago to Miranda. I can forward that checklist again so that it, it gives you the forms that you need to. Uh, I, I prepared that when I. This is a long time ago when I first started, but I prepared all those forms that they can kind of start to fill out. Okay, and they'll take care of that. It's okay. all the stuff from opening and closing the county road. It's the closing of the county road, and I can forward it to you again. Well, I think by law, you have to post that you're closing anyway. You have to, don't you have to Well, post if, if, if you're not maintaining it, and it's now only a public, uh, you know, in a sense, one person. Yeah. Uh, it's almost like a private drive. Then there he has one statute that applies, but almost in, in almost every situation, uh, you're right, you, you do the viewers and discontinue it that way. And the reason, Jason, that I have this done, that I, have well, yeah, I would have them signed, I definitely would definitely. Uh, that, that just takes that any liability somewhere along the line that nobody can come back and these, mm -hmm. one of these well, gentlemen say. And, and I think you need to have that, but I think also, I, I, I kind of already, you have to post it somewhere that you are closing. Well, two thirds that covers of the work's already done. Do you want to yeah. hang on to it till the next meeting? I'll have the view committee go look at it. You'll hang on to paperwork. Yeah. Now, that paperwork right. that's not done on paperwork that we created, it's their own. Yes. Do you that's, want to redone? Well, there's going to be there's going to be other things that they might execute, certainly. Uh, but but we need that probably on our file for verification of, of start kind of starting this process. Normally, okay. a petitions filed to close the road, but we can use this as a per se petition. In a Do sense. you want the easement as well? The what? I'm sorry. The easement. That's good. The easement. Form. The easement. Uh, the easement. That's no, usually no, that's only if we're, that's only if we're okay. getting. Yeah. So yeah, we won't need any of that. Okay. Okay. That's 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 done. Uh, any other committee? Uh, reports. While we're on that subject, the Washington Church Road, which I believe is actually Lane at Dead End, so we need to get Nick to see where the county maintenance hits uh, on that. Uh, actually, no, to the church is falling down. Okay. Well, we, just, church falling we can down. double check that because there's uh, some people that's uh, wanting to double check on that because they're looking at building back there and then also you know having some farm activities maybe I'll, I'll give you the measure I bet we've done this before okay and it goes to that church there but we, we'll do it we'll get okay. it done. thank you uh, <coughs> any other committees being none let's call the uh, master Sam Smock I have nothing to do Jason Book no Joe Barnes no thank you I can't. Nothing today. Larry Morphy. Yes, uh, I got an email from J.C. Young, which he's the executive director of the uh, Masters and Commissioners Association. And the uh, House, the Republican House, wrote up a, a budget they're trying to point what to get passed, and then it is a bunch of, uh, it's $350 million for water and wastewater. And I think when that goes through, we ought to try our best to get as much of that money as we can to finish people that has don't have water here in the county get water to them. Absolutely. Uh, I do believe that Eric's working on that, but I, I will make sure that we are. I'll make sure that that's being done. Uh, 
Eric Hickman, he's the uh, head of our uh, superintendent. superintendent of Waterworks now, and uh, we've talked about this a lot. And he, he knows the money's up there. We've, uh, uh, we've got a grant in application already for one, the last long road we have in the county. We've already got it filed, uh, applied for. But we will also get with them to find out where the ones are that maybe we don't have it. <coughs> when, when do you think you'll hear from that one if it's the one I'm thinking of? I will find that out too. I'll be going to grad tomorrow. I'll find out, get a timeline about when we'll hear from it. We do have uh, we do have some water lines where four, five, six people has run off of the state highway, and I'd like to see if that money comes down the pipe where we can run a single line. Well, out there. I want to identify any of these places, yeah. and if you know of, get us the idea, you know where they are, what the road is, and, and how many they are, and all that, so we can start from that. Yeah. I think anybody in Ohio County that wants water, county water should be able to have access to it. We do too, and we're close. Our county's better than most counties around, I think, yeah. as far as percentage-wise. Uh, before, uh, before the uh, uh, like last one left, last uh, director, Walt, when Walt left, he, he estimated we had 97% of the county hooked up. And we've done a road or two since then, a small one. Uh, you know, we did that Fern Lane there, and we've done a few since then. We have since then. And, and one up in your district that we partnered with uh, Whitesville on. Yeah. So, Davis County or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Well, one of them was City of Whitesville. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, but, uh, yeah that's the one we're looking at, Judge, uh, out for the uh, Hunter Douglas. Okay. And if you're presenting money to be able to come down the pike, that, uh, that we would uh, yes. run that by the Yes, we'll get on that one, too. I'd, uh, I hadn't heard from that one for a long time. I don't know where we got on that, but I'll find out. And I want to thank our road department for getting our roads safe for us in the snow we had. They did. We got a lot of brags on them. Uh, and uh, uh, we, uh, it's not a contest by any means about who gets We got our done for the state did. It's not a contest. <laughs> but we, hey, but we won. But anyway. Uh, but we will say that this is the first time ever during the tornado relief and during this last snow that the state highway department and the county road department has actually worked together. Uh, I'm probably going to look at trying to get a formal interlocal agreement with the district two of the highway uh, to formalize it. But when we're under state of emergency, we can do it anyway. And so. Uh, but been working together really good, and that's the way it ought to be. There was a time that if uh, if one of our tractors went down a uh, state road, we had to leave the blade up. And if they went down a county road, they had to leave the blade up. So, I mean, that makes no sense. But this last thing we worked together real good on. And on clearing the roads after the tornado, the state and, and the county road department was right there together. Unfortunately, the state has a lot of state roads, and uh, I know Pitch Ford is one of the last ones they get to. But the county has uh, probably twice as many as the state does. So, yeah. But, yeah, I think they do a good job too. Okay. Uh, if we're, uh, I want to give you a uh, coronavirus update. You know, you know, we have said several times we refer to things as before COVID and after COVID. Uh, and, and I have myself. But COVID's never gone away. Matter of fact, right today was we're the worst shape that we've ever been since the beginning of it as far as our number of cases. Uh, the only good number coming down the pike uh, is that the uh, death rate, percentage of people that are diagnosed that die, the percentage is small. However, that doesn't mean that the two funeral visits I did last week for COVID-related deaths wasn't too many. Uh, but, the, but the number, the death rate has gone down and that's the only good news in it. Everything else, is, we're just yeah. as bad or worse than we've ever been. Yeah, but this Amazon, it's not near as, near as bad as stuff. Uh, we're, we're, yeah, right. so. we're thinking that could possibly be what gets us the end of it. If, if everyone gets that one and it 
doesn't kill them, then they'll have immunity because that one seems to be a little less deadly. Still makes people sick and still some are dying. So that's not good. Uh, one thing we have to own that our uh, death rate in Ohio County is a little higher than it is anywhere else in the Green River District. For example, we're at 1.64% of everybody that's diagnosed with uh, with the <coughs> virus dies. In uh, Davis County, just to pull another one out of the hat, only 1.47% of, of their cases in, in death. So that's not a good thing. Um, and when you look at the percentage of those hospitalized, it's even worse on us. Because basically half of everybody that ever goes to the hospital here from COVID dies. Uh, 188 have been hospitalized, 91 have died. So uh, that's, that's something we have to own. And uh, we'll do everything we can to find out why that is and uh, try to reverse it. Uh, I don't think we're at the end of this by long shot, but maybe, like Larry said, maybe the Omicron variant, uh, which, by the way, they don't run everybody's tests don't show what variant it is. Uh, everybody's tests don't show. Every, they pick one every so often, and they do it. They do think that the predominant number, the dominant number now is that Omicron variant. Uh, maybe even to the point of 75% of all we're having now is that. If not more. Yeah. So that's the latest the health department has for us. That's good. But they, I mean, if you go in and get diagnosed, uh, you test positive, it's not likely you're going to find out from that test what variants you have. Uh, has anybody else got anything for good this spot? If not, we'll be adjourned. See y'all two weeks.